In this video, I will show you the three ways to solve a system of equations, and we'll first focus on the 2 by 2 system of equations. And I will go through all the three methods with this example right here. The first method is to graph them, and this is what we do. Graph the first equation, and then graph the second equation on the same x and y plane, and look for the intersection. That's all. So, let's focus on the first one. We have the 2x minus 3y, this is equal to 6. How do we graph this? Well, we want to isolate the y first, right? So, that's minus 2x on both sides, so that this and that will be cancelled, and we have negative 3y, and this will be negative 2x plus 6. What's next? This is negative 3 times y, so we have to divide. Divide it by negative 3. So that this and that will cancel. And now, divide this by negative 3, and divide this by negative 3 as well. And we get y will be negative 2 divided by negative 3. We get positive 2 over 3, and put the x on the side. 6 divided by negative 3, we get minus 2. And we are ready to graph the first equation, right? So let's do that, and I will put down the graph right here. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you guys should use a graph paper, and if you want to have some graph paper, you can check out the link in the description. I have some graph paper in the PDF form for you guys. Okay. I will graph the first line in white. Begin with the b value, which is going to be negative 2, and that's the y-intercept. That means we go onto the y-axis, negative 2 is right here, and I'm just going to put a point right here. That's the first point, right? And we look at this is the slope, right? m is equal to positive 2 thirds. That means 2 goes up, right? go up twice, and then the 3 means we have to move to the right. From here, go up twice, and then the 3 tells us to go from here, 1, 2, 3, 3 times, and just put another point. That's it. And you should use a ruler and just connect the dots. I will just try to grab it as clear as possible, something like this. This is the first line. Second equation. We have this one, and I'll do this in blue right here. We have 4x plus y, this is equal to 5. And there's only one thing we have to do, then we can get the y by itself. Let's subtract 4x on both sides. So that this and that will be cancelled. And we get y equals to negative 4x plus 5. Well, the 5 right here it's the b value, we begin on the y-axis, and this is the y-intercept. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is right here, put a, a point, and that's the slope right here, right? m is negative 4, but we should look at this as a fraction, right? Negative 4 over 1. What does this mean? This will tell us negative 4, that means go down 4 times from this point. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And this one tells us to go from here, move to the right one time. So I move to the right one time, and it's right here. So that's another point. At the end, connect the dots, and I will, which is going to be like this. Okay? And now, at the end, we just have to look for the point of intersection. They do intercept right here at this point, isn't it? And hopefully you guys also graph this along the way, and your graph should look prettier than mine, because you guys have the graph paper, isn't it? What's the point of intersection here? What is the x value first? Well, it seems that we have to move to the right one time, and this point is like in between of 1 and 2. It seems like it's 1.5. It seems like it. 1.5. How about the y value? Well, it seems like it's negative 1. And that's it. But the issue right here is that, as you can see, when we are trying to solve a system of equations by graphing, sometimes 
the point of intersection, it may not be on the whole number coordinate, right? In this case, it may be okay because it's 1.5. I think we did it pretty close, and I think this is also correct. And um, sometimes maybe we end up with like one third or things like that. Maybe that will give us some trouble. However, this is how we're supposed to graph and look for the intersection. That's it. But we should have other ways. Otherwise, if this is not exactly 1.5, what if this is actually 1.49, right? Hmm. Let's see another way to do this. The second method is called the substitution, and this is how it works. We are going to first isolate either x or y from one of the equations, and then we'll plug in that expression into the other equation so that we can merge the two equations together. And at the end, we shall see one equation with just one unknown. And with that being said, we see that we have one, two, three, four. We can isolate one of these variables. And which one is the easiest to be isolated? The answer to that is this plus the y right here. Because we only have a plus y, we don't have any other numbers besides one. That's multiplying with y, right? You can also try to isolate this y. In fact, we did that in the previous part, and we end up with fractions. You can also try to isolate this x or that x. Up to you. But the easiest choice, it will be this plus the y right here. So we'll do that. Let me write down this again. We have 4x plus y is equal to 5. We just have to do one step. Well, minus 4x on both sides. Cancel, cancel, and we have y by itself, and this is equal to negative 4x plus 5. And now what? You see, we have this expression for the y, right? And this came from the second equation. What we have to do is, we will plug in this expression into the first equation for that y right here. And let me color this right here. So let's do that. Let me write this down again. We have the 2x minus 3. But then for this y, I will open a parenthesis and I will put this in. Negative 4x plus 5 right here. And this is the same as y. And this is how we merge the two equations together. And at the end, we have equals to 6, of course. So Let's put that down here as well. One equation with just x, we can totally solve this now. So let's do it. Be sure you take this and distribute, distribute into the parentheses, and you see we have 2x and negative 3 times negative 4x. That gives us positive 12x. Negative 3 times positive 5, that's minus 15. And this is equal to 6. Be sure to combine a term on the same side. So 2x plus 12x, that is 14x, and this is minus 15, and that's equal to 6. And you see, this part is pretty much the things we've been doing over and over again, right? <laughs> so the rest should be really automatic. And let's just add the 15 on both sides. Cancel, cancel, and we have 14x equals to 6 plus 15, that's 21. What's next? Divide both sides by 14. So that this and that will cancel. X will be 21 over 14. We can reduce this by 7. 7 goes into 21 3 times. 7 goes into 14 twice. Therefore, the answer for X is 3 over 2, namely 1.5. And we did it right earlier. From the graph, it looked like the x value was 1.5, but we couldn't be sure, right? But with the uh, algebra method like this, we can be sure that x is equal to 3 over 2, which is 1.5. Just in case, if x was like some crazy fraction, 1 over 7, for example, there's nearly no way to tell the x value from the graph. However, we're not done yet, though. When we have x is equal to 3 over 2, we have to be sure to go back to solve for y. And we have this equation that we can utilize. 
because we know y is equal to negative 4. And by the way, you can plug in this into any of the equations, but this will be the easiest because the y is being isolated. x is 3 over 2, so let's plug into this x. x is 3 over 2. Okay, let me just indicate that for you guys. And then we have the plus 5 after that. So, let's see, what do we do next? This is negative 4. Negative 4 times 3 over 2, you can put the negative 4 as negative 4 over 1, and you can do this times that. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12, and divided by 1 times 2, which is 2. Altogether, you end up with negative 6. Or you can cross-reduce. 2 goes into 2 one time, 2 goes into 4 twice. Negative 2 times 3, you get negative 6 and then divide by 1, doesn't matter. And then plus 5. So you see y is equal to this, y is equal to this plus that, which is negative 1. At the end, this is how we can write down the answer. Let me put it down right here. The answer is going to be x value. This is an ordered pair. Write it down as 3 half, comma, the y value is negative 1. This is it. x why? So, we can be sure that earlier the graph was also correct. The third method is called the elimination method, and some people will also call this the addition method. And the reason that some people call this the addition method is because we want to add the equations together. And let me show you what if we just add the equations together at the moment. Well, if I do that, 2x plus 4x, that will give us 6x. And you see, negative 3y plus y, that's negative 2y. Uh, 6 plus 5, that will give us 11. This right here doesn't do us any good, because we still have an equation with both x and y. We don't know what x is, we don't know what y is. We cannot solve for the values, right? So, we cannot do that. It doesn't do us any good. And now, let's think about this, okay, carefully. The reason that we cannot just add the two equations at the moment is because none of the variables got cancelled. Well, wouldn't it be nice if I had a pass this 3y right here instead? Yeah, that would be pretty good, isn't it? Because negative 3y plus 3y, that will give us 0. The y will be gone. And that would be really nice. However, I cannot just put down the 3 right here, otherwise I'll change the whole question. That's not allowed neither. But that's the idea. We want to have the same numbers in front of a variable. And let me put this down right here again. 2x minus 3y is equal to 6, and then this is 4x plus y, and that will give us positive 5. The idea right here is that First, you want to pick a variable that you want to eliminate, and that's why it's called elimination. You want to get rid of one of the variables. You can choose to do it with x, you can choose to do it with y, and let's do it with y. And in that case, on the top, let me suggest you guys to put down LCM, and that stands for least common multiple. The least common multiple of what? 3 and 1. And the answer to that will be 3. So the idea is that the m should remind you that we are going to multiply. Common means that these two numbers should be the same at the end. And then, of course, the least means that I want to make this the smallest, the least possible. OK, you should definitely write this down so that you can focus on what you're doing. The first equation right here, we have a 3 already, so let me just write it down. We don't have to do anything. 2x minus 3y, that will give us 6. For the second equation, this is just 1. 1 times what will give me 3? And that's the question that we have to ask ourselves. And we know the answer to that. 1 times 3 will be 3. In that case, we are going to multiply the whole equation by 3. So let's do that. Multiply this by 3. And before we proceed, let's check the sign. 
positive or negative. This y right here is negative 3 y, so that means we want to have a positive 3 y right here because opposite signs will cancel each other out, right? So we want to just multiply by a positive 3 right here and just do it. So 3 times 4x, that will give us 12x and distribute 3 times y and that's a positive, so we have positive 3y at the end, 3 times 5 and that's equal to 15 be sure you multiply this number throughout the equation a lot of students miss this number right here on the right hand side so we did this and now we are going to add them up and you see negative 3y and the positive 3y they eliminate each other and we can just add this up 2x plus 12x that's 14x and this is equal to 6 plus 15 that's 21 and now let's speed this up because I can just solve this easily right divide both sides by 14 x will be 21 over 14 that's 3 half just like the answer that we got earlier so now here we have the x value and what we have to do next is plugging this into one of these equations so that we can solve for the y and this is how you should organize your work starting from the left move to the right and then move down and at the end move back to the left again so let's plug in this x value into the first equation okay you can also do it with the second equation up to you let's do it with the first because that's how we did it in class <laughs> so 3 half is this x value so let me put that down here 3 half and we can just write this down as minus 3y and this gives us positive 6 and you see the nice thing right here is that this is like 2 over 1 so the 2 and 2 will cancel 2 times 3 half is just 3 and then this is minus 3y and this is equal to 6 and just solve it <laughs> minus 3 on both sides cancel cancel and we have negative 3y equals to 6 minus 3, that's positive 3. At the end, divide both sides by negative 3. Cancel, cancel, and we have y equals to 3 over negative 3. That will be negative 1. Same answer, of course, because it's the same problem. <laughs> 3 half for the x value, and then the y value is negative 1. You can just write the answer down right here. You don't have to indicate x or y. Sometimes I will just do it to emphasize for you guys. So hopefully this video helps and I will show you guys another example next. So watch my other videos. Okay. That's it.